Well, the economy in the U.S. is still struggling to gain traction. Here with me now is Phil Izzo from the Journal. Talk about the latest economic survey we have out today. Yep. Phil, what did the survey find? Well, basically what the economists expect is sort of slow, steady growth. Not really anything great. Um, about below 3% for the rest of this year, enough to bring down the unemployment rate but really, really slowly. They expect How much are we talking about bringing down the unemployment rate? They, they expect we're at about 8.1% right now. That by the end of the year, they only expect it to be down by about to about 79 So not really much. I mean, a part of that, too, is people coming back into the labor. They expect people to start coming back into the labor force, which will subdue the, the, right. the, the, the drop in the unemployment rate. But they do expect about a little more than 2 million jobs to be added over the next 12 While months. you're speaking, let's get some of the major points from the survey up on screen here, if we can. Let's see. There, there we go. So GDP, 2.2 to 3%, 185,000 jobs added per month, 16% chance of another recession in 2012. Not a pretty picture. Let's bring in John Hilsenrath in Washington, D.C. John, good morning. Hey, guys. Uh, good morning to you. You know, the, the piece of the survey that I think is most interesting is, is when we ask uh, economists where they think 10-year Treasury yields are going to be. Those expectations for 10-year Treasury yields keep falling and falling and falling. You know, a few months ago, they thought they were going to be in excess of 4% within a couple of years. Now they're well under, uh, well under 4%. And we're seeing 10-year Treasury yields fall as we speak back to where they were uh, back in September. You know, it's another example of very subdued inflation expectations and capital flooding into the U.S. as all these worries about Europe and the rest of the world just mount. John, that's what I was going to say. I mean, how much of this is really sort of worries about the U.S. economy versus just worries about Europe? I mean, we've seen the German 10-year yield go down even further. The Swedish yeah. yield, Phil, this morning I saw was at something like 1.48 percent. How do you divide those two things up? You know, I think it's, it's two factors. You know, one is just general risk aversion. Uh, investors are getting out of risky, it's the risk off trade again, and people flood into 10-year treasuries when that happens. But the other is, you know, there were worries uh, a year ago, earlier this year, about commodity prices uh, going way up and a, a bout of U.S. inflation, and it isn't showing up, and people are pricing that risk out of the market again, that, you know, there just are not inflation worries building in the United States. All right, John, thank you. Phil, last word to you. Sure. What does this survey and things like the falling 10-year mean for the average guy or girl out there? Well, the big concern is that there's a shock out there. And then there, and what the economists are telling us is that, you know, right now the biggest risks are to the downside. And there's a lot of potential pitfalls out there. And if, there, if we see a lot more political, in, if we see continued political inaction, if we see a big shock from Europe, that type of thing is going to have ripple effects for everyone. So it's sort of, it's, it's talking about the fragility in the system exactly. and how easy we could go from 2% growth to something a lot worse. Right. But when you're, anytime you're below 3%, you're below essentially trend growth, you're in a risky position because when you get hit with, with something at that level, there's a, a lot further to fall.